welcome to Inner Voice of Knowing podcast. I'm Kay Doran, a shamanic leadership coach and healer, guiding you through life with a foot in both worlds. When you understand the terrain of the inner landscapes, the mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic, you will become the leader within your physical life, both personally and professionally. After all, the power of change is in your hands. Let's get this journey started. Welcome back to Inner Voice of Knowing. I always love it when I get to the the podcast episode where I have a fabulous guest on, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Lady JB, um, an extraordinary woman. And I was truly blessed, actually, to to have been recorded for for your program. And when we were talking, I was about to ask. JB to be on my podcast. And she said, well, can I be on your podcast? And I'm like, perfect. (laughs) I love it. So you're in Canada, igniting possibilities in humanity, showing people just how powerful their personal stories are, host and executive producer of Ignite Possibilities, which is what I've just graciously been on, CEO and founder of Ignite You. And I'll leave some of the other stuff there that I've that I've seen and I watch you on Facebook and I really want to share with the audience before I I sort of bring you in on this JB which is I've only chatted to you a few times and and I'm an observer and everything that I observed was you were so authentic and real you can turn up as as glamorous as as can be and you can turn up when you were doing your ride across Canada, which we'll talk about a little bit as well. Just no makeup, hair not done. And and I just love that about you. So, you know, thank you for wanting to be on the podcast and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just delighted to be here. I, I watch you. I love what you're doing. So it's great that we are witnessing each other's greatness from across the world. Love it. So you have Ignite in basically ignite you ignite possibilities talk ignite talk publishing about, ignite and your humanity publishing. ignite legacy yes. oh my god everything that you do everything that you do so why the word ignite yeah it's so wonderful and i i it was god given to me really because i think back to when i really thought about creating the publishing house and all of the training and the programs that i do And Ignite just seemed like this word that had spark and it had ignition and it had power and flame and trajectory and rocket fuel. And just when I think about a match being that one one immediate strike creates can create so much, we all have that. Every individual has that ability to create that spark and to be that match to to really build a wildfire in in humanity and in society and an impact and all of those things. So it just it became the the word that was so synonymous with the work that I wanted to do. I love it. We don't have the visual for this podcast, but your background is all these posters. Ignite your conscious uh, leaders. Ignite your goddess. You know, ignite <laughs> your recovery. It does. It has so much power to you. When when did this drive um, in your life and clearly the businesses that you do, when did that ignite for you? Well, I often tell people that I started my first business when I was nine, which I did. I started a little jewelry company and I was selling uh, necklaces in the parking lots of, you know, the, the, the pub and the restaurants and and. What I found was I would make something at home. I'd go out on the weekend. I would try to sell it. People would buy it. I'd have $2 in my pocket. They would walk away smiling. I would walk away smiling. And I just thought like, wow, like that's such a great feeling. And it really ignited in me this desire to be an entrepreneur. I had multiple businesses throughout my life. I was the only kid, you know, in my junior high and in my high school that was, you know, doing a business. I always think business, even my kids to this day, something will happen. I'll be like, you know what? That'll make a great business. You should start a business. You should turn that into a business. And they always like, no, mom, I just want to be a kid. But I just have this knack for business. I have this knack for creating solutions to problems. And I've just always, always had that in me. I'm always just have that mindset of like, that could be a business that could grow a business that could turn into something. And I just think possibilities are endless for everyone. Oh, I'm going to have to get my uh, young 
goddaughter to listen to that because she's been selling and then are getting franchises from her friends to help, you know, sell bracelets and stuff. It, yeah, I love it. So I'm going to have to get her to listen to this. She will love it. Do you feel, JB, that people are born sort of with that drive, you know, that entrepreneurial drive, or is it something that can awaken and develop? I, I actually, I think it's both. And great question. No one has ever really asked me that. I know that I was, you know, I've had it since I could ever remember this desire to you know, trade up, uh, you know, a bottle cap or a marble for the next best thing and always yeah. working, you know, with my friends to like, hey, let's do this and let's create that. But the underlining, I feel, belief in entrepreneurs is this desire to serve. We, we really want to serve people. We want to solve problems. We want to make life easier. Uh, we want to see people enjoying a service, enjoying a product, enjoying an opportunity. And so I think most entrepreneurs truly have this desire to serve. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that is innately in all of us. I think we're all born with this desire to uplift humanity, to be kind to others, to be in service uh, to humanity and to, you know, our parents or to our society, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our community. And so I think that many of us dial it up a little bit more and, and, and lean into it and other people take a little bit longer time to realize or do it because of all of the, you know, it's work. It's, it is, it is work. It is, it's not something that just comes easily. And like anything that you're good at, any great athlete, any great sportsman, any, anybody who's great at anything, they have to put in the time and the effort. So I think that's really where many entrepreneurs are created because they put in the work also. That is so true. It is, you know, even in developing ourselves spiritually and deepening that connection of that power that exists inside of us takes work. It takes discipline. Yep. It takes consistency. And there's no fast track to it. Do you do you feel that though, you know, the thinking that way, feeling that way, behaving that way just becomes the way of doing your life? Well, I think, again, back to entrepreneurs, a lot of us are very systematized people and we can be quite robotic or we can be quite logical. And I think there comes a time in all of our lives where, and I often say, you're going to get down on your knees and realize there's something greater than you or something greater than you is going to take you to your knees <laughs> until you realize it. <laughs> And so I do feel that there comes a time in many entrepreneurs' life and, and all people's lives, not just entrepreneurs, where there is that awakening and that moment where yes. we're ignited to believe that there's something greater than ourselves. And why are we doing what we're doing? What is the mission? What is the purpose? What is the value? And we reflect upon where we have come from to date and look to see what we can do moving forward, either to make bigger impact, to make a change, to solve a problem, those sorts of things. And I feel that that's really when spirit steps in or spirit is awakened in all of us. And you know, the truth is it's different for everybody, but it's the same in its, in its own way. And you and I talked about sometimes there's not a word for it. There's not yeah. an explanation for it, but we know it when it happens. I did some deep brain training with some very incredible world-renowned doctors and activating a deeper consciousness in my brain. And I did go into this incredible state where I was, where I really felt like I met God and God was mm -hmm. at a gateway towards a much bigger cosmos. And he even said, like, I'm just a shepherd. I'm just bringing together all of the consciousness. I'm just waking it all up. And it was so beautiful because I was like, doesn't it say in the Bible that God's your shepherd? And so I was like, here he was saying it. But then moving into this greater realm where all particles and all consciousness and all beings were just truly one. And yeah. like you said it, uh, in our interview, it's hard to put it into words, but when you know it and you feel it, um, it's it's there's nothing else like it. And it's definite. It's defining. I love that. That's so powerful. And I love that in that experience, um, that's what you were told about being the shepherd because, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time and, and I've watched people, you know, I'm the healer and I'm this, and I have to give myself titles in this world. Right. But I always find them all completely limiting. But the one thing that I will always say is the best coach, the best mentor or healer. We are really just guides that, not, and we should mm -hmm. know the terrain. 
And it's mm. like, you're doing this journey, but I will show you the way, you know, mm. but, but you must do it. Yeah. It was really powerful for me too, because I grew up going to Sunday school and I grew up going to church. And so God was always sort of above me or was like, you know, this higher being than me. And in that moment, really, God was like, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to shepherd you into your greatest experience. And that just shifted everything for me. Um, of course, I, you know, deeply, and what I love about my business and I love about my experience is I deeply have the ability to infuse spirituality and knowingness and God energy into all that I do. And it's such an, a beautiful thing because it's not a hierarchy situation. Yeah. It's a collaborative, cohesive melding of greatness. And, you know, I, I, I've been working on a book called Ascension to Divinity on how we all, you know, we have to realize there is a God and mm -hmm. then we have to realize that God is good. And then from there, what we realize is we are a part of God. And then from there, we realize we can perform miracles like God. And I know some people are going to say that's incredibly, you know, egotistical or boastful or, you know, said from a human being. But the truth is, we can perform miracles like God, we can move mountains, we can change the trajectory, we, we can shift the consciousness, we can make humanity think differently, we can do incredible things because we are God, a reflection of God and God is in all of us. So Thank you for that, allowing me to just go on that on that soapbox for a moment. That was just so powerful. And I was just sitting here, just literally rained in chills all over mm -hmm. my body. And it was just so beautifully and powerfully said. And and I just feel like pe when people understand that that exists within all of us, yes. then we're not boasting that, hey, I'm better than you. No. You know, or that person's lower than me. And I always say to people, when you understand that you are soul and energy and part of that divine source and science has now proven the universe exists within us. So therefore we also exist within the universe. Right. And, you know, that um, when you are harmful to another, you are harmful to yourself because we are all connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you are correct. We all have it in us. We all were born with greatness. We all were born magnificent. Yeah. We all were born, you know, I, I don't like to use the word perfect, but we were born perfect. And we've now agreed to this wonderful human experience that has asked us to challenge us. I sometimes say you're going to love this, Kay. We're all born with every human emotion pinned to our birthday suit. And our <laughs> job is to experience every one of those emotions. And yes. no one of those emotions is better than the other. We're not being punished or betrayed or hurt because we've done something bad. We're simply saying, I'm willing as a human being to experience every single emotion on the human list. And some of those are difficult emotions, but as a human entity wanting to have a human experience, those emotions are all part of that. And so when tough times show up, sadness, betrayal, deception, all of those, I just feel like, okay, this is one of those emotions on my list. And I get to see what that feels like, go through that and then move on to the next one. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. And I feel like when we can change our, the lenses that we wear and go, what if there was a gift in this? I just don't know what it is yet. Right. Or, um, yeah, I just don't know what it is yet, but I just <laughs> know that it's there and it will be revealed at some point, but I choose not yes. to be a victim in this. Um, True. I mean, I so just beautiful. recently, I recently went through a difficulty with a colleague and then I just said, okay, clean up on aisle four. Like, I just was like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, clean up on aisle four to be determined. I will learn from this and it'll be yet to be displayed what this will reveal. And so it's true if you can just sometimes um, accept, surrender, and know that it's all for your highest good. It's all for your highest good, that it's so much more enjoyable to see how it is about to unfold. Yeah, I always say I can't see round corners. God or spirit yeah. sees the whole picture. Do you right. know what? So I can't see round corners. So I can't make sense of this right now. Right. But but I know it's, you know, I know I'm supported and I know it's for my highest good, even if I Absolutely. can't see that right now. So how do you how do you weave that, which is just a way of being and knowing 
and and you know doing in the world into business and how do you find that is received in the business world yeah i have to be honest i think you do need to put your stake in the sand and decide that this is uh which side of the fence you're going to stand over on and the truth is it doesn't matter my mom has a saying if i stood on my head and spitted nickels it still wouldn't <laughs> matter I mean, it's really true. You can't make everyone happy. You can't please everyone all the time. You're never going to be exactly what everybody wants. That's why we're all different flavors of ice cream in the ice cream parlor. We all have our Love own it. thing. But if you are going to spend 15 to 18 hours a day working on what you love, you've got to be convicted. It's got to be yours. And you've got to stand on the side of the fence that's most empowering to you. And so deciding to be the most heart-centered publisher on the planet, which Forbes calls me, Forbes magazine calls me. Wow. And to be willing to make humanity my mission and to be the leaders of empowerment publishing, that was a conscious decision that I knew if I was going to go down that road, I was going to please a lot of people and not please wow. a lot of people. And that was okay because the person at the end of the day that needed to go to bed and feel good about the work that I was doing was me. I've got my hands raised. It's like, oh my God. I was going to say, oh. you know, just absolutely and right. so beautifully and heartfelt and, and just so true. And I love the ice cream analogy. I always use the piano, you know, but I love the fact that, you know, some flavors just don't go together and that's okay. Correct. And in all honesty, my, whenever I coach my legacy business owners, I tell them, you want to, um, you want the litmus test. You want the people who are not your people to select out before they even get into your ecosystem because why do you want people working with you who are negative or resistance or rejectors or, you know, doubters? So be you, be exactly who you are, stand for what you stand for and allow the people who that's not them to self-select and allow the people who resonate with that to come mm. closer. Okay. And, you know, I, I remember hearing one time, you only need 1500 really amazing, loving clients and you'll have a very successful business. And sadly, we live in a society where we want 2 million followers and, you know, 800,000 yeah. likes. You don't, you don't need that. You don't need to have that many people in your ecosystem, you need to have 1,500 to 2,500 people who absolutely love and adore you. And that is a fantastic business that will create massive impact. That So many gems. People are going to have to come back and listen to this whole interview, I think, quite a few times, like, like many of them, because there, there's just so much packed into this. How do you deal with all the noise? Like, I... I have people just contacting me all the time, wanting to be friends. I'll say, I see what they do. I'll say to them in Messenger, look, I get asked every day, what is it that you want? They'll come back and tell, oh, just to connect. And as soon as I've said yes, they're trying to sell to me or they're presuming that they know me. And then I'm like, have you not looked at my profile? Do you know what I mean? Like you've, you've actually not looked through my profile or checked out my website or because if you had, you wouldn't be doing this. But there's so much noise out there about apparently what I and other entrepreneurs and people need, how do you, for you, keep that that clear in everything that you're doing, all the businesses that you're running? Well, it's so great that you asked that question because, and I have never told anyone this, so this is sh breaking news, folks. <laughs> <laughs> And when I go to bed at night, I really do visualize my guides. I really do visualize my angels. And my guides, I see them with a beautiful wall around my house. A be, you know, they stand shoulder to shoulder. They stand on top of each other. They really protect my home and they really protect me. And so I really do ask my guides, bring me the right and perfect people for whatever project I'm yeah. working on. Or, you know, welcome in the the people who will help X, Y, Z move forward. And so I do create a bit of a fortress around me before I go to bed. Now, I was a single mom for many years. So that was a practice I did just so I could sleep at night and feel protected. Yeah. But I've continued it over the years. And I do it to, um, you know, subconsciously and consciously and energetically just um, have a support system around me so that the right and perfect people get to me. 
And I just say it all the time, like getting to me isn't easy. So I always know the right people get to me. And I just, I just work that into my, into my, um, into my daily life. And the second thing I do is, and this may sound selfish, but I only do what makes me happy. So when I talk to people and I don't feel happy or I feel angst or I feel stressed or I feel myself stuttering or my throat chakra is closing or yes. there's just this disconnect or we keep talking on top of each other, I just know that it's not the person and no offense to them. I literally just had this situation when I was in Los Angeles. I said to a woman, you're oil, I'm water. Oil is great. Water is great. They're so fabulous on their own. Together, not. So that's totally okay. Like you do your thing you and I'll do my thing because we're just not meant to be together. It doesn't mean we're not amazing. And I think too much we want to get along with everybody. We want to be this happy-go-lucky, perfect kumbaya all the time. And it can be that, but in business, and when you work with people and you work with them hours after hours, like I do, we spend 14 months writing somebody's book. I, I'm, I'm with them every week. Yeah. You want to work with people that you really care about and you want to work with people that make you happy and you feel happy. And so getting aligned with how you feel around people is really, really important. If you don't feel good around people, then they're not your people. Go be around the people that you make you happy, that you feel good about. Now, am I saying don't work with other people that don't make you happy? No, but just really be aware of what you're getting into. My mom always says, love it when people show you who they are. So when someone shows you that they're, you know, they're selfish or they're always late or they're, you know, they're the kind of people that don't get their work done on time, whatever. Just be yeah. happy when people show you who they are, know what their, what their pros and cons are, and then just really be willing to show up to the best of your ability in a way that makes you happy. And I, lots of times you could say, I'm willing to do this, even though it doesn't make me totally happy, but it's going to make me, I'm, I'm willing to accept the parameters and just love the fact that you are on your own trajectory and stay focus on that. I do lots of things that people think are crazy and silly and foolish, my bike riding, for example. And I just always go back to, it makes me happy. I love it. I'm interested in it. It's important to me. Do that. I love that. But what I also really love about that, JB, is that when you talked about oil and water, you weren't throwing mm -hmm. out a judgment that there was something, you know, because so many people, oh, I don't resonate. And then they want to find fault to justify why they don't want to you know, connect with them or collaborate with them or whatever it might be. I love the fact that you're basically, you're perfectly great as who you are. Yeah. I'm perfectly yeah. great, but just together, it's not great. Let's touch on quickly about this bike ride. I was so impressed mm -hmm. when I saw that you had, um, that you had done this. Was that a calling? Well, you know, in 2020, when the government said we had to stay inside and we couldn't go outside, I was like, no, that's not, no. <laughs> it's like, you can't make me stay home. And we had our tandem bike sitting collecting cobwebs in the garage. And I said to my husband, let's cycle to the apartment buildings and let's show people that anything is possible. And that's really where Ignite Possibilities started was because I just turned 50. I gained 16 pounds with sheltering in. I'd never cycled before. And I was like, look, we just need to put one pedal in front of the other and show people what's possible. Get up off the couch, have a desire, get on a trajectory, be willing to do it. And you can accomplish anything. And that has sorry, turned sorry, into. Sorry, Toby. Did you say that? Sorry to interrupt, but did you say you'd never cycled before? Yes, I never cycled before. I love that. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I believed I could. I believed it was possible. And the fascinating thing, and I wrote a book called Wisdom from the Back of the Bike coming out next month. I talk about I never I had to to do our to do our ride, we needed to cycle about hundred kilometers to 150 kilometers a day. I'd never done that. The most I'd ever done on practice was about 30 or 40 kilometers. But I visualized myself every single day doing that ride, being on the road, climbing the hills, seeing the fields, you know, seeing the lakes getting to the finish line, visualize, visualize, visualize. The very first day of our ride, we rode 98 kilometers because I had visualized it so yeah. much in my mind, my body knew what it needed to do. And now that has turned into, we cycled 10,000 kilometers across uh, Canada, coast to coast. And last summer we cycled from Canada to Mexico through the 114 degree heat, uh, through the wow. Arizona and through the Baja. And the truth is, 
I, I did this great photo of me with like a big blister on my lip, a sun blister and like my face all peeling and dirt and sand on me. And like, and you know, the sun just sizzling and burning. And I just want people to know that like, it was so exhilarating because I was doing it. I was living it. I was breathing. I was cycling. I was moving my body. And it's just one foot over the other, one pedal after the other. And when you do that kind of stuff, one foot after the other, one pedal yeah. over the other, you get places. And that's the analogy. You just got to you just got to put one foot over the other and you'll make it. You'll get there. And it's not about the finish line, it's about the journey, it's about the process. It's really about the experience versus the finish line. So would you say that the, that takes courage and the confidence is there at the end because you've done one foot, one action after the other, and then the, the confidence is when it's completed, like I made it, I did it, I completed it. Yeah, there's a real sense of power when you're done and there's a real sense of superhero-ness, I won't, I won't lie. But when we were cycling across Canada, we were about a, 197 kilometers short of our 10,000 kilometers. And I remember stopping the bike and saying to my husband, you know what, I could go home right now because I'm full, I'm complete. I'm blessed. I'm so rich with purpose. I feel so thankful. I feel so grateful. I feel so humble. Like all the feelings that I wanted to have, I feel so successful. I feel so powerful. I feel so fit. I feel so happy with myself. Like the feelings were all there that actually making the finish line no longer mattered. Yeah. And it really showed me, folks, if you have a business and you have an idea and you have a dream and you have a vision, go for the feelings because the feelings is what you're really looking for. Not the number on the page, not the number on the bank account, not the number of followers. It's the feeling and the feeling mm -hmm. will drive you. The feeling will get you up every morning at 6 a.m. before the sun rises when it's freezing cold out on a bike. It's the feelings that you want to really dial into that's so, so important because that's what will keep you going. That's so powerful. Wow. So many gems in this conversation, JV. So the podcast is Inner Voice of Knowing. What is the inner voice of knowing to you and how has it served you in your life? Well, I have a, a you know, a domestic violence story. I was assaulted. Uh, someone broke into my home and robbed me. And I uh, and left me and, you know, disrupted my life intensely. I had, you know, gone down my own road of destruction. I remember being a puddle on the floor. I remember just all hope lost. I remember not feeling like I couldn't do it. And God said to me, no one is coming to save you. And it was a really profound moment for me because what I realized is no one was coming to save me. Yeah. And God said, you need to be your own rescuer. You need to rescue yourself. And that moment was the moment I finally stood up and picked myself off, off of the floor because I had spent months like in despair, months yeah. just in weeping. And I just realized, you know, no one was coming to rescue me. And I felt like that now has become a bit of my own understanding. Like no one is coming to rescue me. So if you don't like something, what are you gonna do to fix it? If you're not happy with something, how can you make it better? If you don't like how you feel, if your body's unhappy, blah, 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 you have to rescue you. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the whole world doesn't matter, but the truth is like, no one can make you eat properly. No one can make you sleep properly. No one can make you study. No one can make you work. No one can make you get up. No one can do all that. You have to rescue you from whatever bad habits or bad thinking or, you know, junky ideas or stinking thinking, they call it. <sighs> you need to be your own rescuer. And in being your own rescuer, you learn how to put the superhero cape on, tie it around your neck, and then you mm. can fly. And when you can fly, then other people see you doing it and you inspire your kids, you inspire your neighbors, you inspire your spouse. And so really, I would say when spirit really, really speaks to me, you know, there are days where I want to give up. I won't lie to you. There are days when I think, why do I want to ignite humanity? It's so hard. It's so much work. Look what the mess that we're in. Yeah. And as soon as I sit down and think that I'm not going to do it, <laughs> the universe and God says to me, okay, you want to give up? And then I'll be like, no. This is no, why I was absolutely. born. <laughs> exactly. And if I rescue me and I rescue me out of my own uh 
you know, debilitating thoughts, then I give uh, permission for other people to do the same. Yes. And when other people do it, they give me permission. And so I would honestly say, like, listen to that voice that knows that you are the hero within your story. I love that. Yeah. Listen yeah, to the because voice. Because we all have a story. Right. We all have a story. We all have a journey. We all have a disaster. We all have a catastrophe. We all have a trauma. But you are the hero of all of that. Love, love, love it. I could keep talking to you to for you know forever and a day. I just think there's there's just so much there. Um so you've you're needing two hundred and something authors for this book. 200, yeah. 280 authors for our latest book, Ignite Humanity. I'm trying to set a Guinness Book of World Records because you know me. I just like to, <laughs> if we're yeah. going to go, go big, baby. So 280 authors in our next compilation book to Ignite Humanity. And then uh, next year, I'm going to try to set a Guinness record for the longest uh, telethon marathon. I want to interview people and raise money to build schools. We're building schools overseas in third world countries with all the proceeds of our book. And so I just want to wake people up to the idea that they can ignite humanity. That's just so beautiful. So how can people get in touch with you? We will put your website, um, as I always do, at the bottom of um, the episode description. But in the meantime, they can, if anyone's interested in in being a part of that book and knowing more about yeah. what you do, they just go to your website, JB. Yeah, just Google Ignite Humanity. We're the only ones on Google. on, And so you can find out more about how to be a part of our book project, how to be a part of our school builds, how to be a part of our speaking events, and really yeah, say yes to Igniting Humanity. We would love, love, love it. Because every single person has an Ignite moment. Every single yeah. person has that moment that sparked them forward. And when we share that, we share the human experience and we create camaraderie, compassion, empathy, and that is going to end wars and prejudice and racism and truly ignite humanity. Lady JB, thank you so much for being authentic because a lot of people can say the words, but you are fully integrated um, with everything that you're saying and you are the real deal. And I felt that very quickly. And I remember one of the first things you said to me in the messenger was, you know, how can I support you? Um, and I thought, wow, that's, isn't that interesting? That's unique. That's, that's beautiful. But it was authentic. And the, the little bit that I do know you and I have experienced you, I can, I can, I can just say you are the real deal. And thank goodness for you being in this world right now. And thank you for being on Inner Voice of Knowing podcast. I'm, I'm so deeply grateful for your, for your sharing. Thank you so much for saying that. And just, you know, I'm going to come and stay on your couch one day. <laughs> and be your house guest. No, I just Come kidding. to Western I Australia. <laughs> we have beautiful beaches, great bike riding. I will come. I will come. Being an authentic is really the only, the best way to be, folks. It takes too much energy to be anything else but. So thank you so much. And ditto to you. I can see the work that you're you're doing the passion and the love that you have for your for for the people that you ignite and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your community thank you join me on my next episode and if you love this podcast please subscribe by clicking on the plus button if you're on apple or like and follow on spotify rate and review and please share in a voice of knowing with your friends